Everyone knows it's the biggest job you can do. Masculinity without kind of aggression, a strength that just comes from a confidence, a freedom of spirit. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to uh, this week's episode. I'm really excited because I have a good friend of mine here, Natasha Moise. And Natasha has an amazing story, a very well-known family, and I think she's grown from that. So if you could, Natasha, tell us a little bit about your upbringing and your story and how you created your own identity. So I grew up in a family of 10, with, which is all adopted. I was number eight in the lineup, youngest girl, two younger brothers. I was actually the first one to really have the drive to do something more with my life. Um, it's really easy to grow up in a successful family, being is that my dad actually owns Swift Trucking mm -hmm. and started it with one truck and he was always my idol and seeing that I could have just kind of held on to the coattails and wrote it, right, but right. I wanted to make him proud. I started out at 14 doing laundry for a salon and day spa mm -hmm. and I bought it when I was 24 and I worked and worked and worked, ended up selling it at 28 years old mm -hmm. and got into PR and public relations. Well, you're an expert at that. <laughs> And I'm pretty good. <laughs> you're lucky because having a father as powerful as the one you have probably opens up a lot of doors. But if you could give like two pieces of advice to, you know, people watching, what do you think are two things that changed your life when it came to PR and public relations and helping you grow? I would have to say the number one is, you know, having the confidence to go up to anybody and talk to anyone, no matter what they look like or if you knew who they were and where their standing was. And uh, I've, I've had a lot of doors open. I've gone to multiple events that people could only dream of going to. And with my father dragging me from person to person, introducing me to politicians and to successful business owners, I was able to connect with each one in a, if it was a small way, a big way. But I used to just watch my dad and he would find a connection and he would hone in on that. And so you found commonality with everybody you met? Everyone I met. And made that connection through commonality. And, and it helped build my confidence because when somebody is talking with you and you know that they've had a lot in their life and they talk to some of the most impressive people in the world, and they're having a very serious conversation with you, it's, it helps build that confidence. Even my nieces and nephews when we're at an event like Celebrity Fight Night, they wanna go meet somebody, they don't go and talk to them or they don't wait for them to come by, they come grab me and say, introduce us. <laughs> so you know, I may not you're even the know introducer. Them. So. That's a good quality to have. Yeah. You know, have no fear and go out and meet people. I think that's, that gave me a lot of success. I'm sure it helped you too. And then what would be your second piece of advice? Um, I would have to say collect contacts, talk, from talking to people on airplanes to talking to people at a gas station, a bar, a restaurant. Right. Be open to communicate with everybody because you never know who you're going to meet. Yeah. And you never know how that person can connect with somebody else or something else that you're doing. Do you think having those two things instill a lot of success in your family? Uh, definitely with my dad. Yeah. Mom, she was the stay-at-home mom, and that's where I uh, ability to be less fearful of people because she was. We called her Mrs. Vicky, so uh, she was that person that you know, everybody was afraid of. So yeah. you kind of because she, she just didn't care what people said or did. She was with Dad when they drove one truck from Ogden, Utah, and yeah. she's had to go through it all from the ground up with my father, and yeah. you know people. They, they seek out my dad for money or whatever, and they're not true friends. It's not about being friends, it's about making connections and doing business, and that's where I learned it from my father. My mom, is, she's, she's very kind-hearted, and she just doesn't do that, uh, she doesn't do that well. Uh, you know, we interview many, many people with high net worths. 
What's the difference between someone who has gone from nothing and made something unbelievable? What was that one thing you think they had? I would have to say that they understood the value of a dollar. I mean, mm -hmm. they, my father and my mom were high school sweethearts in a very small town in Utah, and they didn't have a ton growing up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mother was a beautician, and Miss Rodeo, Utah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and my father, he worked. He worked all the time with his. He loved to work. He he. They tell a story of him being a small boy pushing around a truck, and he goes, "One day I'm going to own a thousand of these." <laughs> He's had about twenty-four thousand trucks. Um, but you know, he had a he had the mo uh, motivation to do what he truly wanted to do, and that's what uh, that's all I could ever want. And, you know, I've always loved business. Um, I do have kids, but I want my daughters to understand, you know what, be your own person. Yeah. Um, don't rely on other people for you to live and to like be able to experience some of the coolest things. And I believe I've already gotten through even to my eight year old because she says I'm gonna be a boss lady like mommy. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. So hopefully you learn from that. Hopefully you can be a boss lady like Natasha. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Take care.